Cobblequers, I think it was the Cobblequer was founded was around 60, 63 or 68. So I I think it, it was uh, 1960 around the, around the time. Uh, so and then and then after that, people very uh, speculated. Uh, and and then people of uh, in the uh, Israel's uh, people found uh, what is the uh, this is the solution is the unique in this in this theory. So the first unique theorem is proved by the Israel. So the, the what it says a static topological spherical black hole in vacuum is described by the short shared black holes space time. And then the one year after, he also published about the uh, the charged case in the uh, electromagnetic vacuum case. So it, uh, there he says a static topological uh, spherical black hole in electro vacuum space time is described by the rational Nordstrom black holes. And then after that, the uh, many papers also uh, try to prove the uniqueness theorem for the Koch case and then Koch Newman cases. And then based on this, based on these, you know, researches, studies, so Carter and Israel made the conjectures. So actually I couldn't find the original, uh, the papers, you know, what the, the uh, Carter Israel conjecture described, but I couldn't find many papers around, around that time they mentioning about the Israel Carter conjectures. So what it says is, uh, the most general final configuration of gravitational collapse is a co human black course. So if we have the uh, gravitational collapse and then black hole is formed, then the general solution is the uh, always Newman. So it, uh, actually the, around the time there was, you know, people kind of believed, uh, yeah. Uh, after that, you know, the, uh, the Ruffini and Willow made a conjecture about the Nohea conjectures, but uh, before that, the, uh, around the time, the atmosphere was like, okay, so, the black holes might have only three charges, and then co Newman would be the uh, the uh, most general black hole forms, and then every black hole, uh, if black hole forms, then that will collapse to the uh, the co Newman families. So the, actually, this is the first papers you know, mentioning about the new health conjectures. So this is published uh, nineteen seventy one in January. So in the in the picture, uh, what it describes, all details of the infolding matter are washed out. So here, the initial and the collapsing state, we we throw everything to the black holes, and then once black hole forms, then the final configuration is believed to be uniquely determined by mass, electric charge, and angular momentum. Okay, then. Uh, so I, uh, so far, I it just I, I just uh, explained you about the background and then the uh, no hell conjectures, you know, based on the uniqueness theor theorems, and then uh, 1972, the the Jacobs made a uh, no hell no hell theorems. So how he uh, started with the no hell theorem is this. So uh, let's consider a scalar field which obeys Klein-Gordon equations in the back, uh, curved background. And then what he did is what he manipulated is uh, he multiplied a scalar field into the, to the uh, Klein-Gordon equations. So as you can see, the, uh, the uh, Klein-Gordon equation in front of it, there is a multiplication of the scalar field and then made a integration to the space time. And then, uh, and then what he did is the uh, integration by part and the first part would be the volume part and the second part would be the uh, surface, uh, surface terms. Then in this case, it's a massive scalar field is massive. So it doesn't, the scalar field doesn't reach to the infinities. So they fall off very fast. So this surface term is goes away. So uh, the only bulk term remains. So then what is the uh, what is the situation this uh, equality satisfies? So since the uh, first term, the uh, the kinetic term is the positive and the mass scale and the ply scale is positive. So integral can vanish only the, if psi vanishes identically in the black hole exteriors. So by showing this, he claimed, he claimed that there is no non-trivial scalar field configurations uh, is possible. 
So uh, this is the first version, the Bekenstein explained the old no hair theorems. So actually the same logics uh, we can apply to the vector field and spin to field. And then, at the, and then later, the uh, but the the Bekenstein also suggested noble no hair theorems because the previous old no hair theorems fails for general the general po uh, potentials. In the previous case, he just considered the mass square potential, but here, if we consider more general form of the potential, such as the uh, double wave potentials, then double wave potential the the has the negative regions and positive regions. So the same logic cannot apply to, to this case. So to ge more generalize the, his argument, he, what he did is in this way. The firstly, he assumed minimal coupling to gravity and then energy density, uh, which is defined the uh, time component of the energy momentum ten tensor carried by the uh, scalar field is, no, is uh, non-negative. So the, uh, the local energy density is non-negative. So under these assumptions, he considered a static scalar field and a static black hole background. So this is the uh, action for the scalar field. And then he made a near, near horizon and the near horizon expansions of the energy momentum tensor, then also uh, infinite expansions of the energy momentum tensor. So this is the uh, result. So in the, in, the, uh, in the figures, in the graph, in the uh, left side, uh, okay, the near horizon, near horizon side, he made the uh, near horizon expansions by using the equations of motions and then boundary conditions. Then what he found is the uh, TRR component, uh, TRR component at the near horizon is negative. And the is derivative is also negative. At infinity, what he found is TRR component at infinity is for, his, uh, for example, like one of, one of uh, R squares and then it's positive. And then its derivative is negative. This is the information we can have from the equations of motions. Okay, then the, uh, what is the form we can have? So the, in the near horizon, in near horizon regions, uh, with the, the information we have TRR, TRR prime. So we can image in two kind of forms the, of TRR. So the first one and the second one. So they are all negative because it's below the uh, zero. And then, but the derivative is negative. And the infinity, we can, we can uh, image in that kind of forms of the TRR. Then we can, then, then he considered it. it. These two asymptotic solutions can be smoothly matched. So then the, the might be if we, the only way to be matched might be the, this yellow dashed line. And then if, uh, if, if that is the second case, then if we can match in this way, in the second way, then the uh, two, the energy momentum tensor at the asymptotics, they can be smoothly matched. But by using the equations of motions, he, he found this is not possible. This is not also possible. So this is the uh, way he proved the uh, noble no hair theorems in uh, 1995. Okay, this was basic, uh, basic ideas for the old no hair theorem and noble no hair theorems. Okay, then, but after that, after the first no, no, uh, no hair theorems, you know, people found out the uh, uh, evade the uh, violate the assumptions and then find the several kinds of the, uh, non trivial black hole solutions. For example, black holes with Young Mill field, and they, I think it was around 90s, and then the Scromium hair uh, black holes is also around late 80s or 90s. Okay, then uh, let me introduce you the uh, Einstein's color field gas bonnet theory. Einstein's color gas bonnet theories. So actually it looks like this, uh, einstein Hilbert terms and the kinetic terms for the scalar field. And then scalar field is coupled to the gravity. So this is no minimal couplings. So for example, the, uh, the curly G is the uh, gas bonnet term. And then the, uh, the coupling function of the scalar field, we can have uh, several kinds. The exponential is like dilatonic coupling or inverse coupling or uh, quadratic, quartic, logarithmic. We can emit, we can, uh, we can, we can uh, make uh, whatever we want. And then let's apply the uh, same logic of uh, the Bekenstein firstly made. So we don't know if you so, okay. I, I, okay, yeah. sure. so why don't you mention about the conformal field, conformal coupled case? 
That is just an example for the invasion of Noel yes, theorem. Yes, right. Yes, right. Yes, yes. Yeah, but uh, here we didn't consider the conformally coupled. So we just consider this model first. Yeah. Okay. So so okay. Let's just uh, let's apply the same logic to the old Noel theorems, and then the uh, equations of motion. If you make a variation of this action, the equation of motion is written. Uh, in the uh, uh, listen, it looks like this, and then oh, uh, here we multiply by the uh, coupling function f in the front, and then we do the same things, you know, integration by part, and then uh, do the integrations uh, over the space time. And so the first part is the uh, bulk part, and the second term is the uh, uh, surface part. Actually. This uh, this one or uh, this work is done in already in these papers. So I will just explain their uh, what they did. So they did is they was uh, the like the Bacon's time they uh, ignore the uh, surface terms and then they concluded okay. So different from the uh, the klein gordon equations, which is massive massive klein gordon equations in this uh, gauss bonnet theory, uh, in Einstein scalar field gauss bonnet theory. The equality can be uh, can, can be made if the uh, coupling function is positive. So what they claimed, all the Noheo theorem can be evaded since the uh, the kinetic term is positive and the gas bonnet term is positive. So the the equality they can make it make it zero if uh, coupling function is positive. So this is their conclu conclusions. But uh, but actually we found in the in the logic we found that there is a very big mistake. So let's just uh, let's just look at the uh, equations their logic again. So they started from the equations motion and then did uh, integration by part. So here uh, like the Beckens time they uh, ignore the surface terms, but the surface term does not uh, disappear. So to to uh, to see this, let's employ the uh, metric ansatz like this. And then the uh, oh yeah yeah and then if we if we plug this metric answer to the uh, second second line, then they is in this way. So basically, this is surface term is not zero. It, at the fine it, at infinity, they does not uh, disappears, but they uh, remains at the they, they made uh, this kind of contributions. So to Make the uh, same arc to apply the same argument to here. We should not uh, ignore the surface term, but we should, you know, uh, uh, we should figure out the evasion of the Noheo theorems with uh, properly accounted of the uh, the surface terms. So here, if the uh, the, coup the uh, coupling function at infinity is zero or pi one, which is the uh, the coefficient of the uh, infinity, and then the uh, pi one is the first coefficient uh, is the coefficient of the one of r power in the scalar field at infinity. If two <clears throat> one of them is vanishes, then no hell theorems evaded. So like the uh, first paper uh, already mentioned. But if they are not the zero, then the no hell theorem fails in this case. So black hole solution might exist. Whatever sign of the f. Okay, then let's look at the uh, noble Noel theorems. So it, actually in the same paper, they already mentioned about the noble Noel theorem, so but, uh, suggested by the Bekenstein initially. So in the Bekenstein's papers, they assumed the uh, minimal, minimal coupling to gravity and the energy density is non-negative. But in this, you know, einstein gauss bonnet theory, Einstein's color field gauss bonnet theory, the, it's not the uh, minimal coupling, but it's non-minimal couplings, and the energy density is negative. So from the beginning, we expect this, the uh, Bekenstein's uh, noble normal theorem might not apply to this case. And then it turns out it, turns out it is not. So uh, the, as I explained initially, let's look at the uh, behavior of the uh, energy, moment, energy momentum tensors, both asymptotics. So near the horizon, the uh, DTRR component is positive, but the DTRR prime is not determined. And at infinity, TRR component is positive and TRR prime is negative. This is information we can uh, obtain from the equations of motion, equations of motions and then uh, boundary conditions. And then this uh, TRR prime is expressed in this way. So here, uh, so actually, what they but they basically required the uh, this TRR prime to be negative 
So the action, the, this term is positive. Uh, this term is basically uh, negative. Actually, I'm gonna show you why this term uh, would be negative, but this term is negative, the pi dot, and then uh, psi prime is negative, and then this is the negative. And then if this term is negative, then the TRR prime is guaranteed to be negative. So in their papers, they require this part should be positive, then there is a smooth matching of the energy momentum tensors and then uh, the anotherm is evaded. But what we found is this. Is there any questions? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, okay. 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 Okay, so uh, we what we did is the uh, we uh, really uh, we uh, took uh, so we uh, th that is the information we can obtain from the boundary conditions and equations of motions. So basically, near horizon the T T R R is positive, and then this this derivative is not determined. Infinity is positive, and its variation is negative. So one one we can expect from the near horizon. Okay, let's consider T R R prime is positive and also negative. This is the form of the uh, the positive case. In the TR prime is positive, then we can explain, uh, we can expect these behaviors, these or these. Or if TR prime is negative, then we can ex expect these kind of behaviors. Then how about the uh, how about the infinity? At, inf oh, at infinity, is, this is has a four of is one of r to the first, and then is neg it's negative. The, the derivative is negative. So we can basically, we can expect this kind of behaviors. Then what you can expect is the, okay, if we have the, we can expect there is a possible uh, possible way to matching of the two asymptotics. First case would be this case, and then second case would be this case, and the third case would be this, and the first case would be this. So actually based on this information, what you have the, in, the, in, the, in the, on my slide, in my slide, there is no, there is no, there is nothing prevent the uh, the two asymptotic behavior. So the behaviors can be matched smoothly. So what you found, it's yes, indeed. Actually, regardless of the of sign of the TRR prime, you can match the energy momentum tensors. So in the initially, they, the authors claimed. So they, the energy momentum tensors can be only matched if the uh, TRR prime is the derivative of the TRR prime, this part is negative, but we found out that this is not. We can uh, always match the energy momentum tensors uh, regardless of the, uh, the sign of the, uh, uh, regardless of the sign or value of the TRR prime. Okay. Uh, Leo, so, so you have yes? five minutes. Really okay, thank you. Life. Yeah, I'm almost. Okay, so actually there was a previous study about this no hair theorem in einstein dilaton gauss theories. So in their papers, they uh, found the oblique uh, solutions when F is negative. So actually, initially I explained the only original paper they claimed uh, the, the coupling function should be positive to evade the uh, no hair theorems. But in this paper, they also, they found, this paper was 2019. In their paper, they found there is a solution, even the uh, coupling function is negative. So what they showed is the low hair theorems. They, uh, in the, from the equation of motion, they multiplied exponential uh, F, not actually the original paper, they just multiplied F functions, coupling functions in front of the equation of motions, but they uh, multiply the uh, exponential f. But here, so, and then they explained why we can have the uh, Harry Black solutions, even though coupling function is negative. But they actually, as you can see the, uh, here in their, in their uh, approach, they, the, they, missed, uh, they missed the uh, surface term as well. So uh, despite employing the same methodology in the, uh, in the original papers, their physical results are contrary to each other's. Because in the first original paper, they, and in this paper, they had the same logics 
from the uh, Bekenstein logics, but they multiplied just to different uh, coupling, the different form of the coupling functions. But uh, it's uh, but their physical result are contrary. So this might indicate there is a privileged manner to validate the evasion of the ordinary theorem. But uh, then theorem loses its universal powers, right? So if you if you want to have a theorems, then we expect this method should be uh, universal. But in this case, then uh, it's not the, the, the first original result and then this result is not uh, the consistent each other. So this confliction is generated by generated because they uh, omitted both the original work and this work, they omitted the surface terms. Okay, then uh, let me uh, try to see the, really there is a hairy black hole solutions. So we started from this uh, metric ansatz and then we use the boundary condition in this way near the horizon and then in, at infinities. Uh, by using this, uh, by imposing this, to, uh, by plugging this to the equations of motions, we, we could obtain this, you know, these additional uh, parameters, pi h. This is the uh, derivative terms of the pi, and then this has to be. This has, uh, this has to have these values, and then b h is has to have these values. So basically, in these uh, uh, problems, the independent variables only is a h and then pi h and then uh, r h, which is the radius. And then the important important condition in this case is to avoid pi double prime is divergent. The, the inside root two should not be zero. So we require this condition. So this is the numerical result for the uh, coupling, for the uh, Dilatonic coupling in the uh, Einstein's Galafield uh, Gasboni theories. So we uh, depicted uh, the pi equal infinity case through the B, through the beta. The beta is the beta value is related to the alpha values. It's kind of redefinition of the alpha. So uh, according to the alpha values, the pi infinity values will different will behave in these ways. So let's pick one point. Such as, uh, this is the uh, case. The uh, pi h is zero point one. So uh, this uh, from this uh, from this line, we just pick the one point and then uh, plot the uh, plot the uh, pi functions. They behaved in this way. The, this is the beta or alpha is negative and then positive, and positive. And then this is the case when a pi infinity becomes zero. Actually, here the it, uh, the scalar field at infinity could be finite, could have the finite values. It's not necessary to be zero, so we couldn't find any justification that pi infinity should be zero. So if so, so but actually, if as you can see, there is a case, the pi infinity could be zero. The this the, this initial conditions here and here and here, but it, but in the uh, electronic coupling case, there is a shift symmetric, so we can make any uh, always make the uh, pi infinity to be zero. So anyway, this was the numerical solution. So we, and then we uh, checked the uh, noble nohe theorems. And then this is the work term, and then this is this was the surface term. As you can see, they are all great each other. So the uh, so I, I mentioned about the work terms and surface terms in previous slide. So so I denoted that this is work term, and then this is the surface term. So we cannot, as you can see, this graph, this result, we cannot just ignore the uh, surface term because they uh, they behave. With they, they almost equally identical. They they are ident identical. So we also plot the uh, charge charge Q of the scalar field. So as you can see, this uh, bulk term is becomes zero, and then surface term becomes zero when the beta is equals zero. Okay. So, and then we uh, also uh, tested with the uh, different uh, different uh, coupling function, which is alpha times pi square. And then the uh, pi infinity values is behave in this way according to the betas. And then we picked uh, for the pi h equals 0 0.1. This case, we just plotted of, of scalar field of scalar functions. So the alpha is negative and the positive. And then this red line is the uh, this point. The, uh, the pi infinity becomes zero. So, and then we also, we also check the uh, noble theorems, the work term and the surface term is identically zeros. 
So they, there actually there is a point that becomes zero. The work time is zero, surface time is zero. Then the then actually that is the case then when the charge is becomes zero. So this point is this point. So charge is becomes zero, which is the uh, uh, first uh, the coefficient of the one of R factors. Then the, 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 that is the that is the basically the factors. And then when this charge becomes zero, then the surface time is zero, and then yeah. Okay, so and then actually the, we also plotted energy momentum tensors of TRR component. So initially in the original papers, they didn't uh, expect this kind of behavior of, of the energy momentum tensors, but we found there indeed the uh, behavior energy momentum tensor behaves in this way, and then TRR prime is behaves in these ways. So summarize the Heribel equal. Actually, I didn't give you the what is the, the Heribel equal in our mind. What did you, how, how we define the Heribel equals. Here in this work, we defined the Heribel equals having non trivial scalar field in the exterior space time regardless of the charge of the scalar field. So at this moment in this work, uh, we just defined the Heribel equals in this way. And then uh, here we revisited uh, the Nohoya theorems in Einstein's scalar Gauss Bonnet theory with a general coupling function between the scalar and then Gauss Bonnet terms in four dimensional space time. Then we first reserve the conflict caused from the incomplete derivation of the old noise theorems by taking into account the surface term and restore the, uh, the reliabilities. Yeah, and then we also clarify the noble noise theorems was always ev evaded for regular black solutions without any restrictions as long as the regular conditions are satisfied. Okay, I finish here. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Oh, oh. Yeah. We have a question. Yes. Yeah, just one question, please. Okay. <laughs> so you have to know that the famous paper of the A, B, K, including the two famous paper, that paper stated uh, clearly that uh, if you choose the appropriate uh, coupling constant, scalar coupling, for example, quadratic coupling or exponential coupling, you can always construct the scalarized breakup. Ah, so so you mean that, that is the point, oh, not yeah. the, the that is not okay. The, that is the main point of the yeah. Actually, paper. They, actually, they the you mean the scholarization spontaneous scholarization yes. papers. Actually, so in in their paper, in the initially they explains about the Noya theorems. They bring the same logic from these original papers. I explained you. They bring that the same logic, but in their in their works also they made a mistake. So we pointed out their mistake as well. Yeah, you made papers. a minor mistake, but yeah, the yeah. main point of those papers is that. Yeah, actually the pro big, the important thing is in the scalarization case they cannot explain the exponential coupling, the Latin coupling case. The scalarization does not have yeah, cannot yeah, have. Yeah. In the case, there is no they they are just the analytic solution. So therefore, you don't need to okay find the, the no, actually, numerical solution. No, no, actually, the, the uh, analytical solution exists for the special case. In general case, you know, we can only have the numerical solutions. No, 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 no. So okay, if you consider the Latin coupling, for example, ex exponential to the power, yes, then yes, yes. the analytic solution. Yes, that okay. is so, some no. special case. So special case, we have analytic solutions, but in general, we can generate the numerical solutions. Cannot. Cannot, uh, so you the, mentioned the, uh -huh. okay about uh, some the old one new no hair theorem, but yes. that that is just a statement <laughs> on on the how to okay evolve the the no theorem okay yes evolve. right yeah yeah how they how the Wittgenstein's oh, idea so of the no theorem can apply okay, yeah okay. those paper yes okay state mm. that uh, uh -huh. we can always construct the scalar break hole by the spontaneous scalarization, can you choose the appropriate the uh, scalar coupling? Yes, okay. yeah, actually, yeah, but the, as, I, as I mentioned, the scalarization only uh, does, not, does not include the general couplings. So, so for one example is this, uh, the Dilatoni couplings, and then there, actually there is a conditions in the scalarization, Actually, I don't remember exactly, but they yeah, require. The, the uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Case, okay. The relative case is the mm. candidate for the. Okay. The, 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 yes, right, right, yes, right, yes, right. Okay, yeah. so, okay. So, uh, please, uh, because of time, 
less discussed in the coffee break. So it's better to uh, uh, finish this talk here and then the, the